Welcome to Midwest Sports Net. Hi, I'm Joey McWilliams. Joining me today on the summit is Casey Bassett, who is the head women's basketball coach for Sterling College. And Sterling now 29 and 0 on the season, number nine in the country, has just made a run through the Kansas Collegiate Athletic Conference postseason tournament, capping it off with an 86 to 78 victory over Tabor in the championship game. Congratulations, coach. Thank you very much. Uh, listen, I know it it was uh, you know just another postseason tournament, but it really wasn't. I mean this this is one of those opportunities. Uh, 2020, 2021 being what it is, you never take anything for granted. Talk about the run through the KCAC tournament. Well, you know um, we had been in the championship game the last two years, and so it was something that uh, we were familiar with. Just the, the grind of playing a team for the third time within the in the conference confines and. And, uh, you know, we, we drew a team on the opening round of our, of our conference tournament that we had just played five days previously. And so that was a, a tough draw of playing Friends University. And then uh, after winning that, we played Kansas Westland, who was very senior driven. And, and uh, we knew that they were going to be fighting for their lives as far as uh, an opportunity to get to the national tournament and continue their season. So we were able to, to come out and, and uh, you know, just play our last home game of the season with great intensity and, and take care of business there. And then Saturday and then Monday championship game, you know, Tabor's arrival. It's, it's, it's a team that uh, very similar as far as recruiting styles, uh, very similar or dissimilar as far as playing styles. Um, but uh, we were excited to get that championship game and it was a super hard fought game and we came out victorious. That was pretty awesome. Well, again, congratulations for that. It's the first conference tournament championship for Sterling since 2011-2012. First regular season title as well. You guys went 26-0 and through the regular season. And, of course, these three more wins at the end. You mentioned playing in the championship game now for the third consecutive time. And, and that that is something I, I want to hear from you about a little bit in that this team seems to have been prepared for this year very well, especially from the, the near misses of the last couple of years, second in the conference tournament, second in the regular season. What did that experience mean to put this team now where it is? Uh, that was huge. You know, the, the last two years, we've just been super happy to get there, it felt like almost. And, and uh, we, we started the game, the championship game, just really not ready to play in a sense. And so... This year, having the experience that we had had the last two years, I decided to totally flip our routine um, and, and do something different than we had the previous two years. We didn't go down and shoot around at Hartman Arena. We chose just to stay here and shoot around here and kind of do pregame things here and get to the gym in a, at a reasonable time as opposed to just finding things to do in between shoot around and, and game time. Um, and th this team, one of the things that's so special about them is they just are ready to play whenever, whenever called upon. So they... They were excited. Absolutely. Having the experience at Hartman uh, has been was was invaluable on, on Monday. And, and we were able to come out and, and start well and, and then continue throughout the game and, and finally get that victory. We're speaking now with Casey Bassett, who's in her seventh season at her alma mater at Sterling. And we're here on the summit today. I encourage you, please do consider subscribing to the channel Midwest Sports Net. We've Recently hit 500 subscribers, so please uh, be along the list and help us get to a thousand. Uh, as coach, you know it is your alma mater and your ninth on the all-time scoring list there. And up until recently, very recently, you were at the top of the mark in career assists. We'll get to that in just a moment because that's some quality play, and your team has shown a lot of quality play over the season. The KCAC All Conference honors were announced on Wednesday. And, you know, I look at the graphic that Caden Ford, the sports information director, used to go with his stories. There are so many Sterling players on that graphic with KCAC honors. It looks like a team photo, Coach. I, and so I want you to talk about those players. I know once again this year the list is headlined by Kyla Comley, who, by the way, just surpassed you as the leader all-time on assists. Of course, she has 2,000 points to her credit as well. Talk about these players that really have gone a, a long way toward helping your team to be 29-0. and 0. Yes, you know, I, I'm so blessed to, to be able to coach the, the young women that I get to coach every single day. And, and uh, you know, we talk all the time about how we're, we're as deep as, as our very last person on the bench. And so, you know, kind of the unsung heroes of our season have definitely been our kids that didn't get those accolades but have just fit into roles and, and each one of them are so important to what we do overall. Uh, but certainly we got we we got some awesome honors as far as the KCAC All-Conference goes. Kyla Comley was a first-team All-Selection. 
um, and was a player of the year the last two years. Mm -hmm. uh, did not receive that this year, but I think she was perfectly okay with that, winning the regular season conference championship and then going on to win the, the conference uh, tournament championship. She, she would trade that uh, any day for the player of the year. Um, and her, her numbers speak for herself and, and her reputation as a basketball player, but as a person really precedes her as well. Um, you know, her breaking my assist record, a little bittersweet, I'm not going to lie. Um, but uh, I would not want it to be broken by any other player. And it's pretty cool that it happened during my tenure as a head coach. And, right. you know, it's it's a Sterling kid, which is pretty awesome, a Sterling High School uh, a player. And she's just grown tremendously and overcome a lot of adversity with injury. So it was, it was pretty cool to be a part of both her 2,000 points, which is remarkable, but, but also breaking that uh, career assist record. Um, second, that person we had on first team all KCSU is Bailey Banger. Uh, Bailey just has a heart of gold. Uh, she is a, a, a twin. Sydney Banger is her twin. They're both from Kingman, Kansas. And uh, just two kids that have improved a ton over the last three years of their time at Sterling College. Bailey just is very level-headed, which I so appreciate with her. You'd never know if she made or missed her last shot. Um, she is a great defender and always is assigned the task of, of uh, defending uh, the, the best player on the opposite team if, if they're a guard. Um, and she just came along this year and, and has just played a great role in there's some nights she scores a ton of points and there's some nights she, she has other opportunities to do things in other areas. And so she's just been extremely steady for us. And, you know, she's shooting the ball incredibly well, knock on wood. And, and we hope that continues, but uh, has just been a great leader with Kyla this year. Um, then we were lucky enough to get a second team, all KCAC and Alexis Theus. Uh, Alexis Theus is from Liberty Hill, Texas, and has just, she can just do so many special things. Um, she has a jump shot that I don't think I've ever seen in, in women's basketball and college women's basketball. She can kind of hang in the air and, and uh, is just almost unstoppable when she, when she does that. But Alexis has improved tremendously on just shot selection overall. Um, she's one of the top field goal percentages in the conference. And I attribute a lot of that to just the choices she made shot wise. Um, and then also she's become a, a much, much better defender. So just really solid overall player. Her and Bailey Banger traded high scores for, for many of the games. And I'd imagine for the KCAC coaches, it was pretty hard to decide which one of them to put where. But uh, we're proud that Alexis got second team. Then we were able to get two players on third team, which is just phenomenal. Uh, Taya Wilson was the first one. Taya, Taya is also from Sterling. Uh, two years ago, Taya was the freshman of the year in the conference. She was also on the all-defensive team. Then she uh, sat out all of last year, redshirted because of a, a foot injury. Uh, had multiple surgeries to kind of fix a problem that she had been dealing with uh, throughout her freshman year. And, and really, no one knew it, but she was playing in a ton of pain. And we were able to, to fix that last season. And she's back this season. Tay is just the do-everything player for us. She is extremely athletic. Uh, her brother is one of the top high jumpers in the country. Um, I think he cleared 7-1 not too long ago and is going to Nebraska. And her family is just athletes. Uh, her mom has a ton of track and field records here at Sterling College and bats play basketball. Her dad went here and, and uh, her sister's at uh, Wichita State running track. But she is just all energy. I have to tell her we were ahead by 40 the other day and she's jumping into the bleachers trying to save a ball. You know, as a coach, I love it. I told her I love it. But, hey, you got to be smart. Um, but she's just that kid that, that will do anything for you and, and does everything for us, rebounding, you know, uh, garden, a player that needs to be shut down that, that maybe is a little bit bigger than Bailey, and, and uh, she, just, she just does a great job overall. Uh, and then last is another Kansas kid in uh, Emily Hendrickson. Emily is from Haven, Kansas, went to Haven High School and then went to Cloud County Community College for a year. Uh, this is her second year with us, and – Emily just comes off the bench and just automatically gives us firepower. Uh, she's got one of the most beautiful jump shots I've ever seen in my life. And every single time uh, she shoots it, you think it's going in. You know, you're shocked when it when it doesn't go in. And uh, she just she's probably taking the most charges on our team. Uh, she's about five foot three, about a hundred and nothing, and and just has that bulldog catcher mentality that she had in high school. And and it's great. You know, she stayed out of. Uh, the injuries because of taking those charges with some proud of her for, but, but she just comes in and gives us uh, just automatic firepower. You know, the things about a lot of our players is that they run another team in the conference, they could possibly be getting more time or even starting. And so these guys 
have accepted their role, and it's been it's been pretty awesome to see. Well, you know, the players weren't the only ones that were on that all-conference list. You are also named the coach of the year in the KCAC this year, and I know that has to mean something for you for and for the school as well. Yes, yeah, so it's awesome. You know, it's it's the Lonnie Cruz Coach of the Year. Coach Cruz is the coach that I played for, the coach that I was an assistant with for seven years, and the coach I took over for when he retired, just a huge mentor, a great friend, and, and it has been a gigantic loss in my life uh, when he passed away. Um, but it, it's awesome. I told my players they presented me with the trophy after the game on Monday, which was really special and cool, but I said, you know, coach is only good as their players, and, and they, they are just as much a part of that as me, and and uh, even more so because they've done absolutely everything I've asked in this unprecedented, you know, year of, of just crazy and change. And they've, they've done outstanding. So it's more of a tribute to them. I'm very excited and humbled to get it. Um, but definitely a reflection of them probably more than me. Well, this year there are no divisions in the NAI, and that means, of course, coming into the national tournament, no Division One, Division Two. The field should be just wide open and, and uh, many quality teams out there. When you look at this team, and without giving away any state secrets from the playbook or anything like that, but, but what do you see as the strengths of this team that could help you have a long postseason run? You know, uh, we are very veteran-laden. I think that's helped a ton this year, more than any other year with, with uh, dealing with COVID. Uh, we play really fast. We, uh, you know, are super up tempo. We get up the floor very quickly, and and it seems like teams in the first and the second half can can hang with us. But you know, that third and fourth quarter is it's a little bit more difficult, and and things get a little bit slower on their end. So we've we've been fortunate just to stay injury free and and stay really COVID free, and and so we have a really good rotation that that we use of about eight players and. They know exactly what's expected of them, and we just we run the floor really, really well. And it's uh, it's pretty gratifying when a team scores and you know is celebrating a little bit, and we're already down shooting a layup on the other end. That's just the style that I love to coach. It's the style I love to play, and and that's something I think um, I'm hoping in the translation of just being able to watch us on film, people don't quite get just how how fast we are up and down the floor. Um, but uh, but that's that's probably the number one thing is is just our tempo and, and speed of play overall. I understand. Well, Coach, you're going to find out who you're going to play and where you're going to play. That's a selection show for the NAI is at 6 p.m. on Thursday night. So uh, you'll be finding out very quickly you know, the direction and the path that you have to try to make that postseason run a long one. So success to you all for the rest of this season. Again, the Sterling head coach, Casey Bassett, the Lady Warriors, 29-0 right now, still undefeated on the season, number nine according to the coaches' poll. And we'll know a little bit more about that uh, postseason placement here pretty quickly. Thank you, Coach Bassett, for taking time with us today here on the Summit. And again, success to you, and may it be a long postseason run. Thank you. Yep, that, that's our prayer, and that's what we're working hard towards. And uh, no, just thank you so much and all your coverage on uh, Midwest Sports.